One of the greatest tragedies to come from the consolidation of technical services under fewer and fewer companies is the increased amount of sensitive data that gets leaked whenever one of those companies gets hacked. One of the most recent examples is the AI data company Snowflake that provides cloud services for a number of different companies, including AT&T. So now it looks like the company that's behind America's most reliable 5G network also has some of the least reliable information security. Now, one of the first companies that fell victim to data leaks via Snowflake was Santander Bank, a database that includes millions of Santander customer bank account numbers, credit card numbers, and account balances so that you know who the whales are, was put up for sale for a price of $2 million by Shiny Hunters, the current head administrator of our favorite dark web hacking forum slash Interpol honeypot, Breach Forums. A couple of days before this, the same administrator posted another database sale weighing in at 1.3 terabytes of information with a cost of $500,000 for 560 million Live Nation slash Ticketmaster users. Live Nation is the parent company of Ticketmaster, in case you didn't know. And this database also included very sensitive information, like the customer's names, the last four digits of their credit cards, and the expiration dates of said credit cards. And this is why you may have seen warnings like this in the Experian dashboard or other services that are related to credit in the past few weeks, because there's a very good chance that your credit card information has been included in more than one database that has been passed around by hackers on the dark web for a number of months now. Originally, the number of corporations that were affected by the Snowflake hack was thought to be in the dozens, but now that number has ballooned to over 160. And there's likely going to be more victims uncovered in the coming weeks, as is often the case with supply chain attacks of this kind. Mandiant, a security firm that is a subsidiary of Google, is tracking this incident as UNC 5537. Now, according to their blog post, all of the compromises that are being tracked so far were the result of login credentials for Snowflake accounts being stolen with InfoStealer malware. And on top of that, the compromised accounts were not using any kind of multi-factor authentication. Now, according to Mandiant, these login credentials were primarily obtained from non-Snowflake-owned systems, and some of the credentials taken from the InfoStealer infections dated as far back as 2020. 79.7% .7 of the credentials that were used in the Snowflake data scraping campaign had been exposed in the past. These were known exposed credentials, and obviously they didn't get updated before this massive security incident. In several of the Snowflake-related incidents, Mandiant said that the initial compromise of credentials occurred on contractor systems that were being used for both personal activities like gaming and downloading pirated software and for managing these cloud system accounts. And so this is what likely led to the InfoStealer malware getting on these systems in the first place, this mixing of different activities. Now, I'm not saying that all pirated media is rife with malware, as Hollywood executives want you to believe, but it obviously does carry a greater risk than obtaining the media legitimately, especially with software. And judging from what we do know about these compromised systems and the people using them, you know, the fact that the user didn't change their passwords for years, they didn't use multi-factor authentication, or just think to do their personal and work activities on separate systems in the first place, tells me that these users' OPSEC was well below that of someone who can safely sail the digital high seas. 
Now, these contractors are some of the juiciest targets for hackers. That's something you really should keep in mind, especially if you are a contractor yourself, because contractors are oftentimes using their own systems, as we see here, and their systems don't have corporate software restrictions on them to stop them from pirating software or participating in other non-work-related activities. And the reason for this is because these contractors are essentially self-employed. And these contractors oftentimes have multiple corporate customers that they are working with, that they're contracted with to assist with things like Snowflake accounts. Contractors are also much more appealing to the tech corporations themselves than hiring additional employees because the contractors are much cheaper. The companies don't have to pay for the contractor's health care, their parking, or their PTO or maternity leave. Contractors are much easier to fire than employees are, and it's usually cheaper to hire a contractor that's already familiar with software like Snowflake than to spend additional resources on training an employee that's already hired into your company. And like I said in this video's intro, the corporate tech landscape has shifted to where more and more companies are relying on these third-party services like Snowflake to handle the storage of their data in the cloud, which creates this perfect storm of cut corners and cost savings measures to create what is probably one of the largest data breaches in human history. And man, I wish that title was more meaningful because it seems like every other week we end up having the new largest data breach in human history. So what can be done to prevent these ongoing occurrences of massive data breaches in the future? Well, I highly doubt that any of these companies are going to go back to having internal employees handling all of this sensitive data like access to Snowflake instances. And I further doubt that these companies are going to invest in hosting their own cloud infrastructure. But at the very least, they should have a security professional, either internal or I guess contracted, to assess the security of these accounts. Of course, you can't do much for securing the contractor's computer when he's downloading games from the Pirate Bay in his free time, but these companies could have at least required multi-factor authentication to be used on their Snowflake instances. Because at the end of the day, it is AT&T or Santander or Ticketmaster that is responsible for implementing these kinds of policies on their Snowflake instances. And if you do that, it doesn't matter so much that your contractor has been using the same password that got compromised back in 2020, Although I should mention that it is kind of difficult to set up multi-factor authentication with Snowflake because apparently you can't just do a company-wide multi-factor authentication policy. You have to go through and apply it account by account. Although it appears that Snowflake is trying to work on a change to this system. Uh, and there also could have been network policies that were put in place to only allow access to the Snowflake instances from a corporate VPN or some other controlled IP address. That way you're not getting access by a hacker that's, I don't know, in Eastern Europe or something like that. But then, of course, the companies would have to give access to that VPN to the contractor and also make sure that the VPN doesn't have excessive downtime because then they can't access their Snowflake instance and potentially other services that are relying on the Snowflake instance won't work either. But of course, none of this is going to change if you, the end customer, don't vote with your dollar to create an impact on these companies that is greater than the cost of them just doing their security correctly in the first place. And finally, to you, the end user, make sure that you stay vigilant against things like scam calls and text messages and of course identity theft since everyone's credit cards have been stolen multiple times over in this Snowflake incident. 
But as far as this AT&T hack goes, the hackers who stole the call data from AT&T are absolutely going to sell that to scammers who then could use those call records to impersonate people that are in your contacts list and use that for spear phishing attacks. Now I know most of my subscribers probably won't fall victim to these, but make sure you protect your boomers because in this cyberpunk dystopia, they really are the most vulnerable amongst us. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and buy some of my awesome merch from my online store, Based.Win. 10% discount store-wide for paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.